name will concern. I just wondered, you know, certain women with genetic breast cancer are more likely to get ovarian cancer. How much research is being done on different other types of breast cancer and whether or not the ovaries should stay <coughs> or be removed? So I think uh, th this question is about the fact that we know that there's a link in some women between breast and ovary cancer, and that link is conveyed by the presence of a mutated gene called BRCA1. Ken, this would be a very good question for you. I know you're working on this. And the question here is, how about those people who might have an increased risk and don't have an identified mutation in BRCA1, right? Right. And... Uh this is a question that uh, actually is a topic of our BCRF-sponsored work this year. Uh, over the last decade, uh, we've uh, collected uh, 57 uh, individuals uh, who have had both uh, breast and ovarian cancer uh, in the setting of family histories and not family histories. Uh, and now, because of the same technology that uh, Dr. Vizelga mentioned, allowing us to sequence entire genomes, we've been sequencing uh, not only the genomes um, that folks are born with, but also some of the tumors uh, in a collaborative study with uh, the Broad uh, at Harvard, um, and we're beginning to find some things. And so these are women that are BRCA negative, and the question has always been, is this just a statistical fluke? You know, breast cancer uh, is, uh, you know, one in eight, and uh, ovarian cancer is one in 70, and if you multiply that together, one in 500 or so women will have both, or is this actually a, a, a concordance? And what we're finding, um, at least we found already, are some uh, newer genetic markers uh, that uh, would allow us to make those predictions. So this is early days of this work, uh, but we hope by the end of the year to have this entire uh, group uh, completed. And uh, as the, the, the questioner uh, pointed out, um, there's nothing uh, more, uh, more exasperating than having a second cancer in any patient uh, in remission. Uh, and in the, in the scenario of ovarian, where you have the opportunity to go in and, and perform preventive, uh, we do laparoscopic surgeries at, at Memorial, uh, that clearly um, is something that we would want to target to those individuals that are at hereditary predisposition. I think the scary part that this always raises, and there are many people in the room that this will resonate with, is there have been waves of recommendations over the decades to take out the ovaries just because you have breast cancer and then resistance to not do unnecessary surgery. And we go back and forth on this issue. And uh, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is really a way of allowing us to get more precise in those recommendations so that we do the surgery when we should, and we can avoid it when, when it's really not necessary, right? <laughs> Sir. Right, that's right. I mean, la the laparoscopic uh, uh, surgery is a very easily tolerated procedure, but when we wrote that New England Journal paper in 2002, um, really identifying this in, in BRCA carriers, there are complications even for uh, a surgery that is simple. So what we want to do is, uh, is target the, the interventions. but. I think what we do, and those of you who have come and, and we've seen clinically know that if there is the family history, even in the absence of BRCA, if we have ovarian cancer in the family, we're urging um, caution and we'll do those surgeries in, in selected circumstances, even uh, in the absence of the BRCA, if we have the family history to support it. Great. Thanks.